Do you like pretty blue outfits and dresses? We don't talk about spring demon. Hello everyone. Today I shall show you how to main gardener from Identity 5. Like a pro! This video will include tips and tricks that high rankers use, as well as how gardener works for the newbies who are just starting the game. The table of contents will go like this. First we'll start with how gardener's abilities work. We'll go over tricks to use in game with these abilities. Then we'll finally go over tips for people who are struggling. You can skip to the timeframes on screen if you want to go to a different section. Let's go! Abilities Gardener is a difficulty one contain and assist survivor. Well, at least that's what it says in game. Emma can be pretty hard to learn, especially if you want to use her in high rank. Her item is the toolbox. As of 2023, her toolbox can destroy rocket chairs, disabling hunters to chair survivors on the rocket chair she rakes. This toolbox has a 13 second cooldown, and it does not deplete when Gardener is using it. Hunters can fix rocket chairs that the Gardener has dismantled. When you break a rocket chair, you are visible to the hunter for a few seconds. Rocket chairs take around 5 seconds to dismantle. Gardener's second ability is Protection. This ability is only available for her to use. Protection provides a bubble-like shield for the first 50 seconds of the match. Hunters can break the shield by hitting Gardner, but Gardner will not gain any fear. The shield can be recalled after 20 seconds of it disappearing, meaning it has a 28 second cooldown. The shield takes 2 seconds of standing still to recall. When near rocket chairs, Gardner's vaulting speed is increased by 10%, and all rocket chair takeoff speed is decreased by 10%. Gardner can also see the nearest rocket chairs through walls being able to locate them easily. Tricks Let's go over start game tricks first. At the start of the game, if a rocket chair is near a cipher, prime break the chair. If you want the hunter to chase you, or they spawn near you, break it fully. Then just start kiting or decoding. For general tips, only spawn your bubble when near safe areas while kiting, such as pallets or windows. Or when rescuing someone, stand at a good distance away from the hunter, like behind a wall. Spawn your bubble, and then rescue. Please remember, Gardner can't get terror shocked when her bubble is up, so just rescue them as soon as possible. Then remember to body block the person you're rescuing, please! Against double hit hunters like Nyad, Guard26, etc., you're going to want to use your bubble as much as possible, so you don't get double downed. If you want to rescue your teammate while they're ballooned, spawn your bubble and break a chair. The hunter will have to put the survivor down and fix the chair, then pick them back up. Just try to break the chair as much as possible. If you get hit and the survivor hasn't struggled free yet, just go back to decoding. Tips Deactivate your bubble when you're not planning to use it. This can become really annoying if you accidentally activate your bubble. To deactivate it, just click the Hellember icon on screen next to Emma's toolbox. Hunters can also hear your bubble activate, so if you're hiding, the hunter will hear you. Try using a 12-3 or 3-6 persona. Gardner isn't technically a rescuer, but you can make her a rescuer. Bringing Tide is great for rescuing your kiters if they got downed. Use your bubble to transition. Using your bubble to transition is great. If the hunter hits you mid-transition, they receive a hit cooldown so you can transition safely. Even if they don't hit you, you're still safe until you come to your next kiting area. And that's all I know. If you have any more recommendations, put them in the comments and I'll put it all into pinned comment. Thanks for watching and good luck on your ammo rounds, degenerates. <laughs>